Hey everyone, so in this short demo, I wanted to show you how I'm using Veeam Backup Replication as my central management console to manage my Veeam Backup for AWS, my Veeam Backup for Google Cloud, and my Veeam Backup for Microsoft Azure. And with the most recent version 12 upgrade and all the iterative um, upgrades of those cloud products, I wanted to show you how quick and easy it is to update or but also the fact that I'm not running any virtualization in this in this environment I'm just running cloud-based workloads and I wanted one EC2 instance running VBR to allow me to control all of those uh, those appliances out there in the in their respective clouds so what we're going to do is we're going to run through we're going to jump onto the VBR server and we're going to start protecting protect, uh, sorry, start upgrading the VBR server along with all of the components or the appliances that are in the in the other environments. So first of all, we have to consider, we have to download the latest version. So over the last couple of weeks, we've released quite a few different ISO revisions with different build numbers. The reason why you need the latest and this one that is listed here in this in this setup actually gives us the azure plugin which was the last of the veeam backup for azure products to have the latest upgrade so when we mount that and we and we bring it up we get the option to upgrade veeam backup replication on a machine that already has version 11. now if you're just installing it fresh then obviously it would come up with um, installation options and not upgrade options to to that one of the things that I really like about this new update wizard or the installation wizard, especially the upgrade wizard though, is that it's going to look for, it's going to look at your existing setup configuration and it's going to provide insight into, oh, you should be doing that in this way or, or this is not compatible. So if you did at this point, if you've downloaded the wrong ISO that maybe doesn't include the Microsoft Azure plugin because it wasn't released, then it would come up in in that um, in that like recommendations. So license, this is what we're going to upgrade: the catalog, the server, and the console from eleven to twelve. Um, license file. If you don't add a license file, it's going to stay as your community edition. And then this is the bit that I was mentioning around just checking your configuration. Uh, sorry, so the database. Because I'm going from 11, I am on Microsoft SQL. I'm using Microsoft SQL locally. I don't have a dedicated SQL server. I also don't want to go to um, Postgres at this point. Maybe that's another video for later on. This is that configuration check. So configuration check is going to look at all of the compatibility issues that you have prior to upgrading. You can see here that we have a um, last known retention policy, which will now apply. One of the features in version 12 gives us that that capability and then we hit the upgrade i've obviously up, i've obviously sped this up um down to about 10 seconds this took me about 25 30 minutes to sit through and listen to this um i actually quite like the the pop-ups that you see here they're they're giving us a bit of information about what v12 brings hopefully you've already seen the all of the different blog posts and everything that talks about that and there we go v12 is now upgraded so what there is an option during that where you could say upgrade update all components um, i think it's like the second screen that i chose not to to press because i wanted to show you what that looks like so now if i go and open that console you'll now see that the console is ver version 12 so if you have other machines that are connecting into this then you'll need to uh upgrade that console using the iso image as well and then We'll get into the into the management layer. And the first thing that we see when we finally get in is we'll get to see all of the components that have available updates. So there we go. You see that the servers or the components that we have, the appliances that we have. So yeah, I want to upgrade all of those. It gives us a warning saying you should have paused all of your backup operations with any of those appliances. And again, I've sped this up so that we're not sitting around waiting. But what you're going to see is 
each one of those appliances in the cloud, so the AWS, the Azure, the GCP, and in fact, there's another AWS one as well, is that these are going to take an EC2 snapshot of that appliance so that we've got a rollback if anything was anything bad was to happen. And it's going to take that snapshot. It's going to upgrade the appliance. It's going to then delete the snapshot. It's going to upgrade or update the certificate for accessing that. It's going to update permissions. It's then going to um, start those services back up and be in a good place. There you go. Everything's green. Hit that finish. You'll see here as well that we have all of our instances and our services that we're already protecting, EFS, RDS, uh, Azure VMs, Cloud SQL, etc. So yeah, just to finish up, is this is just showing how VBR can be used to protect and have that visibility of all your cloud services it doesn't have to just be there for for virtualization thank you